is going to present for our project with the project topic of design and development of gear quick uh, gear best quick return mechanism. So our group members are Irene Ding Fu Yi, Sadia Kasavan, and An Shu Chen. So now we're going to our we are going to our introduction part of our project paper. What so what is quick return mechanism? It is uh, used to convert the rotary motion into a reciprocating motion. Basically, there are three kinds of quick return mechanism, which are with or quick return mechanism, crank and throttling mechanism, and hydraulic drive. The diagram here shows the basic structure of quick return mechanism. There are four main components in this mechanism, mechanism which are crank, slider with slotter bar, connecting rod, and ramp. So the slider here is the slider is always positioned within the slotter bar and it is free to move along the bar. A crank is connected with the gear that is always rotating in a constant angular velocity. So in this diagram, the circle with blue colors is indicate for the gear or motors. The movement of the gear is always relying on the rotation motion of the motor or gear, of uh, the rotation of, of gear. So the motion of the the motion of the the motion of the slider will will promote the motion uh, of the slotter bar as well. The crank in here is used to transfer the rotation motion of the gear to the slider. So now it goes to our uh, goes to the connecting rod. The connecting rod is used to transform the oscillation motion of the uh, uh, the slotter bar into a re reciprocating motion of the ramp. The ramp is reciprocating along the somehow cold line of stroke. So the diagram here, we can see that there are two kinds of stroke, which are reverse stroke and the forward stroke. The reverse stroke is happened when the crank is moved from B1 to B2 in a crosswise direction and the slotter bar is oscillate from the P1 to P2. So the, the reverse rod is just the inverse of the forward stroke. So this project is asked to design for a quick return mechanism crusher. Thus, we design for a crusher with crank and slotting mechanism, which is uh, one of the quick return mechanism. This mechanism is generally generally operate with the help of motor. There are two kind of two type of gear involved, which are small and big gear. The small gear is called as pinion, and the large gear is called as ball gear. The motion of this mechanism is start from the driving pinion. The driving pinion is connected uh, with the with a motor and pass the power to the bull gear. The rotation of bull gear causes the motion of the sliding, uh, the sliding block as well as the oscillation motion of the. Uh, due to the oscillation motion of the sliding, uh, the slot link. The oscillation motion is then transferred to the reciprocating motion of the ramp. So the concept is much more similar as, uh, much more similar as I mentioned, uh, the slide before. So in the uh, crank and slaughter mechanism, the reverse motion is of the ramp is always high, highly is always faster than the forward motion uh, movement in order to provide a good finishing uh, performance. Quick return mechanism is really is uh, really helpful, uh, useful and 
It is generally used in a machine such as sharper machine, floating machine, power source, mechanism, cutter, and so on. Due to the forward stroke is slower than reverse stroke, the cutting time is highly reduced with the help of this mechanism. We, uh, the machine is able to uh, reverse quickly after completing an action uh, or work. So now we are going to our project statement and our uh, project objective. The reason for conducting this project is to solve the problem of the uh, paper cup. People always throw the paper cup into the dustbin without, without compressing it. The bin is occupied easily with the large space of the paper cup. A new plastic, uh, plastic bag is uh, required to be replaced, the old one, and this action is really uh, pollute for our environment as a uh, plastic bag is difficult to compost. So there are two objectives of our, uh, our project. The first one is to design and uh, design a simple quick rhythm mechanism crusher machine that is operated manually and involving a low manufacturing cost. The second objective is to diminish the volume of the paper cup around 18%. So be, before we uh, start our project, there are a few previous research that we have referred. The first previous research that we refer is Google.b et al. done in 2018, which undergoes, which there undergoes on, on can crusher in terms of manual, semi-automatic, and automatic. For a manual manual crusher, a can is insert uh, the a can is insert into a crusher and pull down the leveler to compress the get the can. The compression process is done by a uh, human being. The uh, this uh, this process should be done repeatedly and continuously so that the can is able to be uh, compressed into a smaller volume. So for the semi-automatic crusher, they use the combination of automatically and manually operation. Less effort and time needed as compared with manual crusher. The last is automatic can crusher. It has a highest efficiency among three kinds of crusher because this kind of operation, this kind of operation uses the least effort and time. An electric can crusher is able to compress the can in much smaller volume than manual as well as automatically can crusher. The next the next pre uh, previous research that have with that we have found is done by uh, Raganathan.s et al. done in 2018. They have presented a research paper on designing and design and fabrication of coconut crushing machine. Crusher is designed to make use of a crank and slaughter level mechanism. Of a four bar mechanism is utilized to compress the coconut. And AC power is supplied to the motor of the crusher. Due to an electrical power is used much, uh, manual work is highly reduced uh, by using machine as well, uh, as the coconut is difficult to be cut off. So they give out a suggestion for future research that uh, the, the resource can be improved by increasing the motor speed to achieve more output. So the last resource paper that we have referred to is the resource done by Rajesh.rll done in 2016. They have carried out a research on a double side can crusher machine. In this 
uh, research, there are three parameters are involved in designing consideration, which are maximum force needed to crush the can or plastic bottles, element use and standard size of can and uh, plastic bottle. An automatic can crusher is used to compress the can or plastic bottle to, uh, to reduce the human work. So after they are doing the research, they suggest that a power, a mechanical power transmission that runs by run by electric motor is encouraged to be used in the future study. Thus, based on the previous star, uh, previous mission that we have referred to, we found out that the automatic uh, crusher can generate the highest output efficiency with the aid of power uh, transmission. Hard items are even difficult to be compressed by using manually uh, by using manual crusher. Thus, therefore, in this project, paper cut with which have low strength are chosen to be compressed manually by using a crusher. The crusher is utilized the, the concept of slaughtering mechanism. Greetings to Dr. Aslan and my friend. My name is Ang Shu Qian, and now I would like to share about the design analysis of our project. It is important to analyze the design before a prototype is built. Therefore, some analytical calculations are done to determine the dimensions of the pinion and gear, as well as the length of the straw for the quick return mechanism. After all the dimensions are determined, the design of the crusher machine is sketched in the solid work as the first step prior to the construction of the prototype solid of the prototype. SOLIDWORK is a software similar to Autodesk Inventor, which provides the features to check out the prototype in three-dimensional view prior to production. It is incredibly important to sketch the design in SOLIDWORKS as it helps to simulate the mechanism. With this, not only we were able to ensure that the mechanism has been designed, is able to function properly, but we were also able to save a lot of time in production as the exact length of material is known. With the help of simulation, we were able to prevent wastage of material and identify it accurately. In SOLIDWORKS, a base structure of the crank level mechanism is first sketched. Then, two gears are designed using equation that we have learned in this sum. The driving gear, as the pinion, is designed with 24 teeth, while the driven gear with 48 teeth. Then the driver and driven gears are meshed together. Then the reciprocating crank link, which can also known as the connecting road, the slider and the slider path are designed and assembled together. A simple simulation is run to make sure the prototype is able to function. Once the design is finalized, a physical prototype is constructed. Based on the analytical calculations, the length of stroke is 107.1 mm, while the height of the paper cup is 80 mm. This shows that the slider as a crusher has more than enough distance for the reciprocation motion to crush the paper cup into a small piece in an ideal situation. In totally of the performance, the crusher machine was able to perform its functionality as per the theory of crank and slotted level mechanism, we were able to replicate a model which was able to translate a rotary motion into reciprocating motion for the crusher machine. At the initial stage, the gears rotated smoothly and the crusher mechanism was good. However, over the time, performance of the crusher machine was moderate and it was unable to crush the paper cup completely. For this prototype, we use pinion and gear to amplify the torque. When a smaller gear drives a larger gear, the output torque in is increased. Therefore, a higher force can be applied to the crusher to crush the paper cup. However, throughout the production of the crusher machine, we came across certain weaknesses problems. 
that were potentially affecting the performance of the crusher machine. So firstly, as mentioned above, the number of teeth of the pinion is 24, while the number of teeth of the gear is 48. However, the pitch circle diameter for pinion and gear are just 48 mm and 96 mm respectively. Therefore, the number of teeth for pinion and gear are considered as high. When the number of teeth is higher, the gears can rotate smoother, thereby less friction is produced when the pinion and gear are meshing together. Yet, there are disadvantages, disadvantages when a gear has more teeth. The strength of the gear teeth reduces as the number of teeth increases, as it has a higher chance of stripping the teeth. The gear might experience breakage, especially at the root of the tooth fillet, when force applied exceeds its limit. Therefore, we can design gears with a better meshing configuration and teeth numbers, lowering the risk of breakage. So that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Su Chen. Hello, everyone, and greetings to Dr. Aslan. I'm Sante Kitsuman, and today I'll continue presenting on the materials and equipment segment that we basically use to make our prototype of crusher machine. So firstly, the main component that we needed was a DC motor. And with the courtesy of the Robotic Club, we used the DC motor from the brand of Sha Yang Yi, which runs on voltage of 12 volt, has a rated output of 20 kg force per centimeter square and a rated power output of 41.3 volts. Besides that, we also reused some old 3D printer gears that we found from the lab for the pinion and gear. Next, we also used 3D printed crank, connecting rod, bearing, M5 bolts and nuts, M6 bolts and nuts, PVC pipe, wooden block, aluminium bar, L bar, and paper cups. Now, let's take a look at the methodology segment. Firstly, we will run down the journey of designing the physical prototype. To begin with, firstly, we chose the appropriate material for the prototype. As to reduce material waste, and I, as I mentioned earlier, we simply reused some old 3D printed gears that we found in the lab. We then inserted bearings in the center of the gears to mount connecting rod, which pretty much allows the rotational motion of the gear. We then continued the modeling process with 3D printing of the slotted lever, which enables the rotary motion of the gear to be translated into the reciprocating motion of the slider. Then we focused on the production of the slider, crusher, and slider part. Slider and crusher were designed using wooden block to exert a maximum pressure on the specimen when being crushed. Meanwhile, for the slider part, we used PVC pipe to ensure a smooth reciprocating motion of the slider. The PVC pipe, we also designed it in such a way that it has a slot on, the, slot on the top to enable the linkage of the connecting rod to the slider after some careful consideration on the dimension. And also as to increase the efficiency as well as innovativeness of our crusher machine, we designed a drop zone slot at the bottom of the PVC pipe, whereby once the specimen is completely crushed, it drops directly into the bin. Next, a wooden plank was also chosen as the base for the prototype. We then began assembling the parts onto the, onto the base by using some fasteners. Then we sketched a base sketch, which we pretty much did on the solid work, and we re-sketched it on the base, which is the plank. Then we found the axial point and we fixed the axial rod, pinion, and gear using some fasteners such as a washer, bolt, nut, connecting rod, and coupler. The slotted lever, reciprocating crank, and slider with crusher were then installed onto the prototype using fasteners like connecting rods, uh, bolts, and nuts as well. Lastly, we also attached the DC motor um, in such a way it was installed from the back of the wooden plank. Now, as we can see in this figure, this is the finalized prototype. To add on, our prototype's crusher machine's orientation is actually horizontal and not vertical. This was designed in such a way to enable the crushed specimen, the crushed specimen of paper cup, to directly fall when, the, when it's crushed this way, the specimen directly drops into the bin according to gravity. So now, Let's take a look at the working principle of the crusher machine. As we can see, here we have the gear. But at the point, we didn't insert any pinion. 
And this is because we are going to rotate it manually using the connecting rod attached to the gear. So later on, we will insert the pinion right here, exactly like this. But at the moment, since we are going to give pause to the gear, we are going to remove the pinion. So now we will see the parts of the prototype. So this is the crank with slaughter bar. This is the connecting link. This is the slider with the crusher. And lastly, this is our slider part. We also placed a wood block at the bottom to the crush paper. We also have a drop zone at the bottom of the slider part to drop our crushed paper cup. So now we will see and take a look at how this prototype is actually going to work. Now we are going to slowly rotate the connecting rod attached to the gear to observe how the mechanism works. So as we can see, we have the slotted bar here and the connecting rod only moves in the gapping in such a way when power is transmitted from pinion to gear, rotary motion is turned to reciprocating motion whereby the slider reciprocates in the range of slider part. Now, we will gradually try to rotate the gear at a faster speed. We can still see that there is some slight friction. Yeah, it's restricting the motion of the slider, but yet it does fully allow the mechanism of the slider. Now is the time to put our crusher machine prototype to test. So we began by placing the specimen in the slider part. We connected the DC motor to a circuit, which had a motor driver and a battery. Before beginning the test on the prototype, we also tested the functionality of the motor externally. So then we switched on the circuit to observe the function of the crusher machine. So this is the moment of truth. We tried running the motor attached to the pinion and the machine was perfect with the gears. The gears started rotating, producing a rotary motion, which was then transmitted to reciprocating motion and via the links and slider. So we started off with few pulses of power and then gradually increased it. And we can definitely say that the crusher machine was a success at its peak performance at high speed as well. Then we placed the specimen, which is the paper club paper cup in the slot. We then switched on the circuit to run the crusher machine and observe the condition of the paper cup. We repeated the experiment a few times to obtain a more accur accurate observation. However, the power or the torque which was transmitted was not strong enough to smash the paper cup completely. So gradually over the time, the links of the crusher machine also loosened due to extreme stress and started rotating in opposite direction as can be seen in the video. This was one of the biggest challenge that we faced throughout the production of the prototype of Crusher Machine. Nevertheless, we did not give up and we were able to identify certain possible causes or source of error and we tried our best to rectify it. And as I mentioned earlier, throughout the production of the Crusher Machine, we came across certain weaknesses that were potentially affecting the performance of the machine. Firstly, although the, there was large number of feet can be advantageous at some time, sometimes they can be a disadvantage too. Because at times when the number of feet is large, it can cause the gear to break when mashed due to the inability to withstand the high force. Therefore, we can either lubricate or to reduce the friction and heat when two gears are meshing together or 3D print a better configuration of gear mesh. Besides that, the slider part also had too much friction, causing the slider to not move, move smoothly, especially in the slotted segment. We watched this problem in a video earlier just now. This could be due to the material that we were used to produce the prototype. So to overcome this in the future, we can replace the current slider part with a 3D printed slider part or even try to lubricate the slider part. To improve the overall design, it is also suggested to test out the stress analysis feature on the SOLIDWORKS prior to production of the prototype. With this, we will be able to determine the force as well as the friction caused by some parts of the machine. Next, for the crusher, we can also use some materials which are lighter weight to eliminate the support of its own weight while sliding down the slider part. This helps to reduce the sliding friction and simplify the overall structural design of the system. Other than that, the DC motor that is chosen was 
also unable to provide enough torque to crush the paper. Thus, the paper cup was failed to be crushed completely. Hence, a power window motor, which is much stronger, is suggested to replace the DC motor so a higher torque can be achieved. Moreover, as we can see here, the links started to rotate opposite direction over time. The fasteners assembled to the link started loosening, causing the links to rotate the opposite direction, thereby failing the mechanism. This could be due to high vibration transmitted from the motor. So to prevent this problem, we need to tighten the links even more firmly from time to time and can even use more washer. Okay, three, two... Lastly, another yeah. problem that we faced was the gears. The gears also okay. eventually started well, that, to lose well, the that, mashing, okay. causing the poor performance Three, of the two, machine. One. This was because the base that we used, oh. which is the wooden plank, okay. was kind well, of that, soft well, that, and the nut connecting okay. the connect, connecting Three, rod started two, sinking into one. the wood, losing the strength. To avoid such okay. problem, we can choose well, that, thicker well, that, wood, okay. which are okay. much more stronger, sturdier, Three. Or even Six. use stronger base made right. of steel. So throughout the production of prototype until the testing, we did follow a set of golden rules so that we do not become like the guide out there. So since the production of prototype involves a lot of sharp tools like um, saw, driller, screwdriver, we made sure to wear protective equipment like gloves and covered shoes all the time. It's also extremely important to be extra cautious while working in a lab to avoid accidents from happening. Another important safety precaution is to stay away from water at all times. While working on the circuit, testing the motors, we made sure not to fix any electrical equipment with wet hands as it increases the conductivity of electric current. This can potentially cause injuries, short circuit or even spark. We also made sure to switch off the circuit each time we were fixing the components. So when we speak of spark, since our circuit had um, battery as the power source, we removed the ground terminal each time we turned off the circuit to prevent any energized component from causing shocks. So lastly, we also made sure to not overload the circuit as well. And in overall, we can say that this prototype crusher machine is efficient and definitely space saving. With much more improvisation, we can make sure that this crusher machine is able to perform at its finest and thereby we will be able to achieve our goals. With that, I would like to hand over the presentation to Irene for the concluding segment. Thank you so much for your time and Irene, the floor is yours. So the last is talk about the conclusion of our project paper. As mentioned before, we have two objectives in our project. The first objective is a simple quick return mechanism, crusher machine that is operate manually with low manufacturing cost is designed. The second objective is the crusher machine is designed for reducing the volume of paper cut by around 80%. A prototype of the crusher mechanism is uh, built and test is a uh, test to determine its functionality. This project is uh, successfully studied. The motion of gear and quick return mechanism are observed and studied. However, the crusher machine is unable to crush the uh, paper car completely because there are few witnesses in this design. The crusher machine can be improved by replacing the current sliding path that was made by PVC pipe with a 3D print of the slider path. And another suggestion is to use a power window motor instead of DC motor in order to achieve a higher torque. Yep, so that's all for our group presentation. Thank you for listening.